code gives you the stories behind the moments, helps you understand the why of the results, and opens up another perspective on the sports you love. Code, unlock the stories of sport. Codesports.com.au. Use this text line number as well, 0427154166. If you've got a question for recruiting boss uh, Jeff Parker from Port Adelaide, we're going to speak to him right now. Good morning to you, Jeff. Good morning. How are you going? Good, thanks, mate. Good to have you on board. How are you feeling a few hours before the draft? We've spoken to a few draft kids and obviously nerves and all those types of things. Are you looking forward to it? Are you madly working away or do you go in pretty calm? Uh, no, I think we're we're pretty calm. I think we've we've done all the the, you know, the work now. You know, we've talked to our division and got through all the data and everything else that we need to do to get ready. And so we've sort of got our sort of players in mind that we want to pick and we're just basically just waiting now for it to start and get the opportunity to pick pick one. In terms of uh, trading picks and all those types of things, how frantic can it get? It can get pretty chaotic. Um, there's normally two phones, two hardline phones in, in, in the room and then you've got everyone's got their mobile. So sometimes there's three or four different phones ringing at once. Um, so it can get a little bit hectic, hence why there's a, a few little minutes in between each, each election. So um, yeah, clubs are sort of often you know, monitoring what's happening and trying to move up or back and things like that. So there's, there's always a little bit going on. So you've got picks uh, 12 and 62. That's a fair gap in between, Jeff. Will you be starting those conversations to try and move up uh, and swap a few picks, maybe get into the second round or third round? Oh, possibly. I think um, you know, Jason Cripps, the list manager, has probably spoken to all the other 17 list managers about potentially who might be interested in in moving moving some picks around and whatever, but um, I think tonight will be pretty stock standard. We'll just sit there and wait and then have a look at what's sort of available, you know, come the second and third rounds tomorrow, and then maybe discuss whether we try and move back in. And you know, we've got a list of players that we, we'd like to get our hands on, and if some of those players are still available, you know, in those rounds, we'll, we'll also look at getting up. Jeff, how hard has it been to get a, a good scope on what the Victorians are, have been doing just in the whole COVID situation? Oh, look, it's been really difficult to, to this group of players. I mean, not only have they missed or had an interrupted year this year and only played half a dozen games, they missed all of last year as well. So it's been you know, a big, big dent in their development and um, yeah, trying to sort of make an estimation on what their progress would have looked like if they had have come through and what they might get to. It's, it's made it really difficult this year. Um, so you're sort of putting a little bit of faith in in what you've seen over the years and how players have developed to, to sort of, you know, with, with some of the Victorian boys. And the travel factor, obviously the, the restrictions there, how, and you mentioned not a lot of footy um, played by Victorians, but around the, the country, there's some restrictions on travel. How, in terms of the vision, have you gone back and looked at uh, videos of players? Because obviously that's, that's about the best way of, of seeing some of the talent over the last couple of years. Yeah, well, some of the boys, that's the only way we've been able to see them. I mean, none of, none of our full-time recruiting staff have been able to get into Perth for two seasons. Um, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to sort of, you know, be in Adelaide and watch football there, and I've also had an opportunity early in this season to get to Victoria for a couple of games. So I've seen a little bit of live footy, but not much, nothing like you used to. So, you know, the hours and hours and hours spent in front of computers and TV screens watching division from all around the country, it's, 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 been, um, it's been a different challenge this year, other than, you know, different to the travel. But, um, you know, we've, we think we've sort of been able to work through the process reasonably well and, and got a good feel for this group. How many Zoom chats do you reckon you've done, Jeff? Uh, too many, too many. I think we've, we've, well, we've done, uh, other than I did a few of the South Australian boys face-to-face, um, every other interview we've done has been by Zoom. So you're looking at probably 50, 60 player interviews by Zoom and then obviously Zooms with talent managers and coaches and other you know, recruiting staff that you work with, with the Port Adelaide recruiting staff as well. So it's been it's been a, a lot of time spent in front of the computer this year. Oh, geez, different times. Um, we know the uh, the stock standard answer, and that is you you take the best avail- available talent at the time. Uh, we're live and interactive. Shane from Queensland has texted through. He said, looking at our midfield, how much of a focus is that for us drafting this year? <clears throat> oh, look, it's got a it's a little bit of a focus. So I don't think it's as drastic as people some may believe. I mean, Ollie Wines did win a Brownlow and, you know, Will and Drew, Travis Spoke, you know, they've, they've been pretty good through there. You know, we were hoping that maybe Zach Butters and Tersman and Rosie might have had a bit more time through there last year, but obviously injuries sort of hindered that. So, but we still, we still got an eye for it. I mean, we're not going to sort of leap and 
and sort of stretch yourself to maybe pick someone just because they play in the midfield. But if the right player's there and he's a midfielder, we'll, we'll definitely take him. Do you change your strategy at all, given that Port Adelaide's list is in a premiership window right now? So in terms of if you're further down the ladder, you could look more to the future. Do you draft some of these players? Do you have a look at them? possibly to be ready-made for a premiership next year or the year before? Or is it just purely what you can get out of the next uh, 10 to 15 years out of a kid, hopefully? Oh, look, I think from a drafting point of view, you're probably looking a little bit more long-term. Like, you're looking at bringing in the you know, the 18-year-old kids that have potentially got 10, 15-year careers in front of them. Probably the trade period's a bit more where you, you sort of look at maybe topping up to keep pressing, you know, that, for that finals, finals wins. But obviously... Yeah, the play, I mean, the players that you want to bring in through that first round generally, and if you look at the players we brought in, you know, Rosie Butters, Dersma, George Yardis, Bergman, they've all played pretty quickly in, after we've drafted them and, and made an impact in our club. So we're hoping that that continues, um, you know, whoever it might be that we, we select tonight. And Jeremy Finlayson, you addressed that need uh, during the trade period. Does that give the opportunity for one of those players you mentioned, Rosie Butters, to push up into the midfield next year? I hope so. I'd like to think so. I think I mean, part of the, the, the plan or the thought behind bringing Jeremy in was, one, we think he's talented, but he's he's played multiple roles for the Giants and also been able to play a little bit of second rough as well. And obviously with losing Laddams in the trade, that was sort of a, a bit of a thought as well. So, But we're hoping that the, you know, the young boys keep developing and, and start to you know, really impact in different roles you know, in the coming seasons. Uh, text line open, like we said, Jeff. Uh, this one from Port Adelaide supporter says, "Will Port trade its future first if the right player is there?" Oh, you'd never say never. Um, if the right player's there, you'd always, you know, look at doing something like that to to bring someone in. Um, as we spend a lot of time talking about different scenarios, um, there's, there's players in this in this particular group that you'd probably do that for. So we just got to try and see whether you know they're available if we can do that do that because you've got to find someone that's willing to give up their pick to do that so that's the other hard part as well but we're, we're open to all, all scenarios tonight and have you worked out the situation the point system to make a bid possibly on father son Jace Burgoyne oh look I think so I think we've, we you know, we did some trades at the end of last in last year's draft to bring in a couple of later picks that had points attached to them and we think we've got enough points to cover a bit, uh, you know, on a, for, um, for Jace if a bid comes sort of in the second half of the draft where we, we suspect it might come. So I think we're, we're well organised with that. In the side, Wanganine Miller the right player if he is available? Um, well, he's potentially the right player. I don't, you know, I said, well, I'm not sure he, he's going to get to us. And if he's there when we're, when we're picking, we're going to definitely talk about it. Um, it just depends who else is there as well. But he's had a, a fantastic season. He's a, he's a wonderful young man. He's highly skilled. He's, um, he's probably one of the better kicking decision makers in this draft pool. So, and I think everyone in South Australia was able to watch him you know, develop this year and play some really good footy. So he's definitely a player that we talk about if, if he's there when we get a turn to pick. I was going to ask you about his talents. The highlights that are available uh, online, he's, I mean, his kick doesn't even look like it needs any work. Is he someone, if he was... Uh, to make it to Alberton. Is he someone you could see potentially playing AFL football straight away or at least having some sort of impact next year? Oh, look, I think I like to think so. I mean, he's, he's spent all year playing, you know, reserves and senior footy at Temple level, which is a really good grounding. He's, he's used to the bigger bodies and the, the increased speed of the game. Uh, as you said, he, his foot skills are as, as good as anyone in this draft and maybe even in the last few drafts. It's just um, yeah, he's just got to sort of get used to the the robustness and you know the, the, the once again the, the step up in speed and the bigger bodies of AFL football. So you'd like to think that if you know, wherever he ends up, whether it's us or somewhere else, that he's, he's going to have some impact next year. If there were no bidding systems, academies, father sons in place, would, would Jason Horn Francis still be the number one pick in your eyes? Is he clearly the best player in the country? Oh, look, I think so. I think he's had, you know, it's, it's hard to go past what he's done in, in two seasons of senior football at sample level. I think if you go back over the history, the players that have been able to do that have had really, really strong AFL careers, and I don't think Jason's any exception to that rule. I mean, Dacos and Darcy have, have, are talented, but they, and they also haven't had a lot of football either, which was where they're based. But I think Jason, what Jason's been able to do in the last two seasons, he deserves to be the number one pick. Where do you think he ranks in terms of some previous number one picks? I know it's hard to get a, 
a bit of a judge, but purely on, on raw talent, just going over his highlights as well. He, he's been compared to Nat Fife and a few others. It doesn't sort of seem like he has too many weaknesses. Uh, no, he doesn't. Eh? When I watch him play, it reminds me a little bit of Joel Selwood, I must admit. I think this, these, his desire and competitiveness and want to win and impact a contest when everybody's around it, I think uh, yeah, it's going to help hold him in good stead. I mean, he's, he's going to be able to... I think people will look back you know, in five years and say he was he's as good as the number one picks that have been for, for a while. What about Nick Dacos? Uh, his numbers uh, at under-18 level have been extraordinary. I understand it's a completely different facet playing against men to is against uh, under-18s, but s- some of the numbers that we've, we've read about and seen that he's been able to produce have been pretty astounding as well. So, I mean, he'd be right in. Obviously, he's going to go really early, but um, can you give us a, a little bit of an insight on on some of the footy that he's been able to put together? Yeah, in, in a very you know, limited um, span of football, I've only played probably four or five games for the year, and I've been lucky that I've seen a couple of them live. I mean, his, his ability to to just run to where the ball's going and get it and then use it really well is, is very good. He's, um, he works hard to get involved in chains of the ball movement. So he's, he's liable to get the outlet kick in, in the back 50 and then end up at the other end actually having the shot on goal as he works his way through. But he's he's got a good... He's just got a really good football brain, which is, you know, no surprise given who his father was and, 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 the, 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 and his brother as well. And he's probably been around football his whole life. So he, he understands the game really well. And he's developed his, his foot skills and his running ability to, to a level that's, that's pretty good. So I, I think he's going to have a significant impact next year as well. Uh, Jeff, uh, like we said before, the text line is live and interactive. Plenty of Port supporters getting involved this morning. Uh, 0427 154 One about Jackson Mead and just exactly where he's at and what you'd expect this year. Obviously, uh, an interrupted 2021. Um, I'm not 100% sure where Jackson Obviously, they're all on, on a break. But um, I'm, I'm, from what I'm led to believe, he's, he's, he's looking really fit and, and been doing a lot of work. Um, yeah, he's, he's one of those boys. Unfortunately, his first year was impacted by COVID, and then last year he um, he cops that severe injury down at South Adelaide and, and missed a large chunk of the season. But I think, the, from what I can understand, the fitness staff and the coaching group are really happy with the way he's he's developing. And I would think that if he keeps keeps himself fit, he's, he'll be in line to to play some senior footy this this coming season. How many do you think could get drafted tonight from SA? Jeff, it could could it be one of the bumper years for South Australian footy? Ah, uh, possibly. It's always a little bit hard to know, but given that the the boys have you know been able to play an uninterrupted season, um, and and then the sample I think is a very strong comp as well. It's been a good good grounding um, over a lot of years. So I think yeah, you know, I think they they generally average between ten and fifteen. I don't see why that would be any different this year, but potentially you know even a couple more. You know, you're never quite sure exactly how other clubs are thinking, but um, as I said, they've certainly been able to watch the SA boys play more than probably anyone else. So that always helps. Jeffrey, appreciate your time this morning, mate. Uh, good luck with it all tonight. Uh, and we're looking forward to uh, who's going to end up at Alberton. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. We're, we're looking forward to it sitting in pick, you know, pick 12, which you know, we're sort of right in the middle of it all. So we'll have a bit of a wait and see whether we can do some things before that. But who knows? Anyway, we're looking forward to it. Thanks for having me on. Good stuff. Jeff Parker there. Uh, of course, he is the uh, recruiting manager for Port Adelaide. So they got pick 12, uh, which potentially could blow it to pick 14. Uh, but traditionally, Coons, the last few years as well, their early picks they have done extremely well with. Fix your 3 p.m. summer avo crash with a Tim Tam McFurry. Smooth chocolate, crunchy biscuit, and a velvety soft serve will sort you right out. Summer Arvos and the Tim Tam McFlurry, together and loving it. Available after 10.30am for a limited time. The Tim Tam brand is used under licence.